Hello and welcome back to sharing a chapter a day. This is Do Ra Mi and today I will be reading chapter 57 of Engagement in Peril by Dara Ado Sok. Chapter 57 is titled Tilly's Tease. And on those days that I choose not to go visit mom and family back in Long Beach for the weekend, I would hang around base, hanging out with Anne and a few of her girlfriend on base. Anne resided in the female barracks down the street from my bachelor quarters. Anne was a military brat from the lovely town of Oceanside, the very same town that I had spent my field medical service school in after I had finishing up A school here in San Diego back in the spring of 1996. Anne's father was an officer in the Marine Corps. Now Anne was sizzling, sizzling hot. She had a firm, curvaceous body and a pair of nice, luscious, round, symmetric chests. I can imagine what I would do with those natural, enhanced, luscious boobs if I were ever given the chance to have them in my hands and mouth. Anne had very large, natural breasts, especially for an Asian girl. Well, she was mixed. She was half Vietnamese and half Caucasian. Her young, delicate, firm body held her bosom firmly upright, showing every bit of goods that she had to offer. Anne was my lovely friend then. She laughed at all my jokes, and whenever she's around, she makes me feel all, f and all warm and fuzzy inside. Now, I sometimes wonder that I should have made a move or two on Anne then. So why didn't you make any move on Anne, Dara? Well... I guess you, I was still hung up on that girl Beverly from Polly. I was. I'm sure Anne would have probably given you the time of day if you had only asked and offered her what you had to give then. And what you had for her? You had something special f for that I can say. She would have been lucky to have you, have your young and vital self inside up all in her. I reminded myself of what was once sincerely true. I wanted so bad to pounce on and into her young, delicate body then. I'm sure that I would have eaten up real good, savoring every juice and nectar that she had to offer. But I was too much of a chicken and too much of a dumbass. But nonetheless, we became good friends all the same. I wish that I could have made a move on lovely Anne then, when I had no worries but myself. I wonder what would have been at times if we were able to be more than just friends. Well, I can imagine. If I could turn back the hands of time, I would. I would let I would let Anne know how I felt and what I wanted from her. What I wanted was her body, her ass, and everything else. I wanted so bad to ravage at her ample body. Damn, I so wish I could see and be inside her right now. Just thinking about it. Ooh! Now, beside hanging out with Anne, I also hung out with Tilly, who was lovely in her own right. Now, Tilly was a southern girl who had dirty blonde hair and a really cute and really cute emerald eyes. At time, at that time though, she did have a bad case of acne, but her body was kicking it. Her body was firm and delicate, almost as unbelievable as Anne. Tilly and I had several nice conversations. And sometime, we would have lunch together at the base cafeteria. Tilly and Anne were roommates, and both worked up in the wards while I was assigned to the hematology oncology clinic in internal medicine. I remember a time when Tilly and I shared a brief intimate moment together. She had come over to visit me at my two-man bedroom at the BEQ one night. Actually, I snuck her in through my first floor window. She had come over late that evening and wanted to talk about her frustration and anguish about, about work and such. She just wanted to talk. She just needed someone to listen since I was there for her. And after all, we were friends and acquaintances and I didn't mind if she came over. I was happy. It was no big deal for me then. I was glad to lend an ear to a friend and was happy to share the space in my single man room then. Tilly had waking me up from my short sleep by tapping on my large glass window. In the dark, I went to my window, drew back the long, dark cotton curtain and blinds, and looked outside into the dark. In the dim light, I could see that it was Tilly standing there in my window. She tapped on my window, and I waved. I unlocked the window and pushed it open, and I let her in through the 
push out window and in the dark I guided her hand in making sure she didn't trip over the window pane. We held her hands firmly. She held my hand and we walked and we talked for a bit and we were both bush while sitting there on my bed in the dark. Eventually, after some talking and conversing, we finally kissed and made out a little bit. Our kiss were soft and sweet. Gently we kissed and held each other. We weren't in the mood to fuck around or just have or have sex that night. So we just cuddled in my small twin size bed and fell fast asleep in each other's arm that, that evening. I slept warmly and cozy that night in Tilly's embrace while she was beside me. We both shared my military issue blanket and slept in our undergarments. We both awoke the next morning to my alarm clock beeping and screaming. We greeted each other warmly and gave each other soft kisses once again. Since it was a Wednesday morning, I had to get to my clinic early since I was the one responsible for opening up the hematology oncology clinic this week. I told Tilly that I had to work early that day and told her that she was free to stay in my room as long as she wanted and just chill if she would like to. So I hurried and went about my and got myself ready for work. I showered and freshened up in the BEQ bathroom and showered facility while Tilly stayed rested in my cozy small bed. Once I was finished with my shower and shave, still dripping wet in my in several of my towel, I returned to my room to find the light on and Tilly and Tilly's awake. But still lying in my bed with a nice warm smile. Seeing her there was captivating. Her dirty blonde hair partially covered her face while she looked back at me with those lovely, God given emerald eyes of hers. Once Tilly saw me, she said, Good morning, sir. I giggled and returned the good morning gesture and went about to my dresser to pull out a pair of clean white nut huggers and proceeded to put my navy working white uniform on and prepare myself to go to work that morning. I asked Tilly if she had to work up wake up uh, work up at the ward today. The department she was assigned to. She was scheduled to work today up in the ward but not for a few more hours, she had told me. She then thanked me for allowing her to stay with me last night in my dorm room and that she was happy that I didn't take advantage of her in her lonesome state late, that late last night. I once again giggled and said, no problem. We are friends after all, Tilly. I wouldn't force myself on you if you didn't want me to. And our cuddling last night, well, that was really nice, you know. I enjoyed that. I'll, I'll choose that over any quickie that we might have ha that might have happened last night. You were warm and soft and you helped me ease, you helped me ease too. You eat some of my frustration as well, my beautiful friend. Thanks. Thank you, Tilly. I smiled and honestly told her how I saw it then, about last night. Still with a towel around my waist and another atop my head to dry my wet hair, I put on my white t-shirt and proceeded to put on my working white top. Tilly sat up on my bed, pushed herself off, and walked her way toward me. She then gave me a big, great embrace and thanked me once again. I returned her hug and we both embraced each other's arm while giving each other soft kisses once again like the previous night. That was nice of her, I thought. That was really nice of her, I thought. She didn't whisper in my ear that she wanted to give me something in return for my thoughtfulness and kindness last night. What's that you want to give me, Tilly? I questioned at her possible intention. Oh, it's no biggie. Just wanted to put a smile on your face for the rest of the day. Mr. Sock, she devilishly suggested. She then helped to dry up my hair with the towel that I had on my on my head, and moments later, she flung it across the room. She then kissed me softly on my lips while I returned the nice kiss. Before I could put my short sleeve working white shirt on, she yanked the towel away from my waist and exposed my uncovered low regions. Her eyes seemed to glow at that instant, and I knew what she was getting at then and there. I then asked her, You sure about this, Tilly? Her head shook up and down, and she reassured me with a giggle. Yes, of course. I want you to remember this, sweet little sock. Who was she talking to, me or my genital? She then lowered her person down to my mid-region, with one of her hand cuffed at my testicle and the other playing about on my shaft. Tilly began to arouse the sleeping giant that had just been washed and dried. I was thinking then, oh well, what the fuck, let her have her fun. My, my newly clean 
cleanse my newly my newly clean shaft woke up early fast that morning i had just taken a nice warm shower and now tilly was getting me all hard and bothered as quick as she had got me all hard and bothered tilly went to town with my shaft in her mouth and down her throat gulping gulping with quite enjoyable discomfort i grab at her dirty blonde hair and thrust deeper into her face and mouth as i yank her back and forth into me causing her to gag and choke at several instant with the constant thrust tilly was really good at this sort of thing she slobbered all over my shaft and as quickly as she had started by her blow job on me with the fast jolting and thrusting i had climaxed and exploded in and all over her unwashed face she gulped down whatever was in her mouth while still sucking me dry and the rest were clinging to her face and hair she wiped away with my wet towel that was beneath her bended knees then with my hands still around her around the back of her head i pull i pull her up toward me she smiled and we both kissed for a few more moments my erect penis still oozing some minions lost its hardness and slowly returned to its rested state tilly then helped to clean me up below and we giggle over what had just happened thanks tilly you really made my day i'm gonna have a smile on my face for the rest of the day you know i bashfully asked her what she had just given me and letting her know that i quite enjoy it while i was smiled from ear to ear we both then giggled in each other's embrace from there i finished getting dressed and ready for work and by then tilly too had gotten her stuff ready as well so with a few adjustment of my uniform and her blouse and a few more soft kisses in my room we both held hands and left my dormitory i asked it i escorted tilly out of the male beq through the core deck area where the white sentry was sleeping at his desk and chair and i walked her out of the building we both went without any hassle from the sentry who was supposed to be standing watch we both walked toward the concrete bridge that connected the beq to the naval hospital facility from then we parted ways we gave each other a quick warm embrace we would exchange peasant uh, pleasantry and thank and thanks one one another again and i look on tilly as as she walked away toward the female beq to do her thing at her room i like to think that she'd probably share what had happened between her and me since last night with ann that would be a nice feather on my cap with ann maybe then i'll get a blow job or two from ann as well when she was out of my sight i hurriedly proceed toward my clinic all smiles i was i was that early morning and for the rest of the day as well tilly did put a smile on my face for the day just like sh just the way like she had just mentioned that was a really good blow job i really enjoyed it that was a really good job you got then dara tilly really made both of our days then didn't she thanks for the memory son as i tell myself and give myself props besides fooling around and getting blown by my friends and co-workers i sometimes go to the base gym martina is a co uh co-employee of mine at the internal medicine department and i would go running around balboa park and zoo area sometime and also we would go to the gym you know to bulk up by hitting the weights we never got huge from the lifts but we got fit martina was my workout buddy then he now resides in texas and still in the reserve and he loves everything about superman and even got a tattoo of the symbol on one of his on of his upper arm every halloween for as long as i could remember martinez dressed up as his favorite superhero in that outfit he'll parade around town with no worries or shame in the world he didn't have any shy bone in his body he was never a shy guy and liked to, and he likes to show off his broad shoulders Martinez and I began became good friends and even shared room for a while at the BEQ while I was stationed there at the Naval Medical Center. He was one of the first first person I knew that had a web TV back then when it first came out and we used it to look up porn of course while surfing the web. Martinez was the one who gave me the nickname of Parker Hercules. He's a terrific friend and we still keep in contact once in a while. I wish him much luck and success in all his endeavor. Of course I wish Tilly and Ann much luck as well. Martinez is a good person and easy to get along. And he sure would do well in life. Keep the faith my brother. I'm sure he'll be a I'm sure he'll be better off than you Dara since he's not crazy as you are. As I laugh at myself now for being such a bastard. 
Thank you for listening. This is the end of chapter 57. Be on the lookout for chapter 58, titled Mitchell, South Dakota. This is Do, Ra, Me, and I'll see you later. Thank you.